So the we are on page 24 of this. I don't know if that's the same page as your book, but I'm going to go over to this book and look at it. So we are on page 24 in the book. It says the exact start point of dimensions is undefined. A coordinate tolerance uses a double-ended dimension line. It does not indicate which end of the dimension is a start point and which is the end point. There are many instances where measuring from one surface of the other re uh, results in different measurements. Also, I could hold it in my hand and measure anywhere across there in different places, right, or from different sides. Measuring from one surface to the other also affects the orientation of the measurement, which can make it um, so it can make it acceptable or rejectable. So we're telling them with datums to set it up a certain way on equipment. All right, so right here. It starts talking about this, and this is talking about the potential uh, potential consequences of coordinate tolerancy. Okay. So when you look at this drawing, and we have this area right down here. Do I measure from this surface out to here, from A to this, or do I measure from B to this? And this is exaggerated, but it's just to make a point. There are several ways to interpret dimensions. So here's a question in the back of the book. This causes undesirable conditions. Of what are the consequences of coordinate tolerance? And number one, increase manufacturing costs. The rejection of usable parts may also increase manufacturing costs and fixed size tolerance zones, like we were talking about with the with the um, fixed size of a hole that got huge in its tolerance. That also costs more money. Because I'm still having to, to determine that on that tiny tolerance zone. Part acceptance disputes. There's a significant chance that two inspectors will get different dimensions. Delay, delay, delay. Delay is huge. Assembly problems. Parts measured with different setups may not assemble. So we're going to find that datums are actually specified by how they assemble in the to the next part. All right. Um, this caution. Specifying coordinate tolerances does not communicate a single set of measurement requirements. Specifying coordinate tolerances to locate part surfaces or feature of size should be avoided. The preferred methods are geometric tolerance and the dimension origin symbol. This might be the first time that you've seen this. This is new to 2009. If coordinate tolerance is used, it, is, it, is, it should only be used for non-functional part surfaces. That's when we use coordinate tolerances. If I had a lectern or a stand that I set a book on and I have the dimensions of the outside you know, tabletop that I set my book on. That's not interfacing with anything. But the two posts that slip inside each other to raise or lower that thing are very important. The way that that post hinge connects to that lectern is somewhat important so that it doesn't collide or have interference. So if things do not have a function in the assembly, then don't you can use coordinate tolerances where coordinate tolerance is used to look up part surfaces a part is considered to be compliant if it meets the dimensional requirements under these conditions using a measurement set up from either end doesn't matter the measurement origin can be either from the part surface or a reference plane 
so I can measure it in my hand or set it down on something. I'm going to get tons of differences in that. I know that. Legitimate uses for this. Several assumptions must be made during manufacture. Dispute over part acceptance can occur and the part uh, function may be at rest. It is recommended that the use of coordinate tolerances be limited to size dimensions. Tangent radii, this right here. We usually don't put GDNT on that unless it's functional like for ball bearings or something in a race. Um, and non-critical chamfers. So this right here, size dimensions. Overall size. It's not the location, you guys. It's the size. So when we put positional tolerance on a feature of size, that's its location, not its size. So if you look at this, this is for positional tolerance of that hole. We don't have GD&T on its size. And it can still be egg-shaped. Now, there are things that control form on features of size. But we have to understand what features of size are. And what are features? Features and features of size. And we're going to talk about that. So GD&T... Okay, here we go right here. If a dimension can't be measured with the jaws of a caliper, a radius gauge, it needs a datum reference frame. So if I cannot put calipers across like a chamfer or an angle, then it is not a regular feature of size. All right, so we'll talk about that in a second. GDNT defines part geometry and communicate and to communicate allowable vari uh, variation. GDNT is a design tool. This is for us as designers to specify intent to the people that are making it and setting it up to tell them what is particular. Symbols, rules, definitions, and conventions comprise itself in GD&T. GD&T is a mathematical language that can be used for size, form, orientation, and location of part features. Using GD&T to establish, uh, to properly define a part provides the best conditions for consistent interpretation, proper function, and cost-effective manufacturing. I can do the tolerance analysis on this so much easier than I can assuming 90 degree corners and then looking down in the tolerance block and seeing a plus minus 0.25 degrees of, uh, tolerance. I, that is hard. I have to either use trig or I have to draw it out to see its worst case. And I've done that. Um, Let's see. Okay, here's the philosophy. The design philosophy of GDNT is functional dimensioning. Functional dimensioning is just dimensioning approach that defines a part based on the product fit and function requirements in the assembly. So functional dimensioning will be explained Later on in this course, don't worry about that. I just want you to buy another book. It doesn't, uh, although dimensioning based on the part function requirements is a philosophy promoted in the standard, it doesn't mean that the designer should dimension a part without understanding or taking into account manufacturing and inspection needs. You're always going to want to go down and talk to the guys in the shop and see, you know, this is a collaborative effort. I need to talk to the inspection guys and the manufacturing guys while I'm designing this, not after the fact. It's not all about you. It is about the whole team and if this can be done maybe more inexpensively or less expensive in another way. The Y14 
0.5 standard states that functional requirements are the basis for dimensioning. Function first, fit second, form third. I don't care if it's ugly as long as it works, right? 